Today, we're going to custom make a new pulley for our AMR500 supercharger. This new pulley will increase the RPM of the supercharger, and in theory, that'll increase the boost that's being generated by the supercharger. So in the past few episodes, we've been tinkering with the AMR500 supercharger that we fitted to this 719cc Kubota diesel engine that's powering our lightweight Honda Insight. So far, well, we've managed to significantly improve acceleration performance, and against all odds, the supercharger actually has a positive effect on fuel economy. So, will adding more boost continue the trend of improved performance, and what effect will it have on fuel economy? Let's find out, because I'm sure you folks want to know. This is a mock-up of the supercharger system that we have installed in our Honda project car. Currently, we're running a 1 to 1 drive ratio, and that's generating approximately 5 PSI of boost, which isn't much, but on this little engine, it made a huge difference in performance. Today, we'll be replacing this pulley with a custom-made smaller pulley, and that should increase the speed of the supercharger and allow it to build more boost. Let's get started. Off camera, I went ahead and removed the pulley from the supercharger, and this guy measures in at, mm, looks like about 98 millimeter, or about 4 inches. Well, I reckon we can custom build a new pulley and make it about 20 millimeter, or about 3 quarters of an inch smaller. Of course, I would like to go a little bit smaller than that, but that would cause interference problems, and what I mean by that is, a smaller pulley would cause the dry belt to come in contact with the motor mount system, and that would be a big problem. Anyway, I'm thinking we should try to make the new pulley out of aluminum, so to get aluminum on short notice, I have a cool trick. Check this out. Alexa, open a portal to, um, Planet Aluminium, and get me a chunk of 6061. Okay. So Prime members now have access to all the planets in the known universe. Over on the planet Aluminium, this is all they have, and their prices are reasonable. Oh, it looks like there's writing on it. The cake is a lie? Hmm. So this is a fresh chunk of 6061 aluminum alloy, and all we have to do is cut away all the stuff that's not a pulley, and we'll have a brand new pulley for the supercharger. I mean, really, how hard could it be? I actually have no formal training on using a lathe other than making a screwdriver handle in Mr. Schubert's metal shop class way back in the day. Apparently that was enough training because I pretty much wore this lathe out in the last 20 years making stuff. So the first step is to cut a clean face on this slug of aluminum. I'll actually do both sides, but I'll do the other side off camera. Next we'll drill a hole in the center. Now this hole will be used to lock this slug of aluminum onto a mandrel because it's impossible to do the machining that we want to accomplish by holding this workpiece directly in the chuck. Okay, so far so good. Now we can mount the aluminum onto this mandrel. This mandrel is actually made from a one inch go-kart axle and it's seen a lot of miles, but it's still holding up pretty good. Of course I'll have to tighten all this stuff together, but I'll do that off camera. Now in the interest of speeding this process up, off camera, I've already cut this slug down from 100mm to 80mm, and now we're going to do the final cleanup cut. This lathe is pretty much bare bones, but it does have an auto feed, which is a nice feature. This will probably take a few more seconds, but let's fast forward to the next step. So now I'm applying some dike and blue, and this is so I can actually see where I'm cutting. You know, there's so much slop in this lathe, I don't trust the dials, so I have to manually line up all my cuts. And here I scribed an easy to see center on the workpiece. With the center established, now I can line up the groove cutter. On this operation, I want to cut a six millimeter deep groove to give us enough clearance to do a compound cut in the next operation. Yeah, CNC would be nice, but this works. Okay, now we have to do a compound cut, and this is what actually cuts the V-shaped slot into the pulley. So as you can see, I have the tool post slider set up on an angle, and this will allow the cutting bit to cut an angled groove into the piece we're working on. When I turn this handle, the bit will actually move in two directions, and that's what's known as a compound cut, or something like that. To figure out the exact angle, I measured the angle on the older pulley, and transferred the angle to the tool post with an angle finder thingy tool. Remember, I'm not an expert, but I do play one on YouTube. 
So this compound cut is very satisfying. You know, the hardest part of making a V-belt pulley is cutting the angle, and if all the measurements are right, it's a breeze. And this is a nice skill to learn in order to make custom pulleys in the future. Of course, with 50,000 people watching, I'm sure some of you would say I'm doing it all wrong. But keep in mind, this is the first pulley I've ever made. And to show you that an idiot can do it, I'm doing it on camera. Okay, well, this side is cut. And now we have to cut the other side. Unfortunately, the arbor is too short and we can't reposition the tool post. So we'll have to flip the workpiece around in the lathe. So flipping the part around in the arbor introduced a bit of a wobble, but the good news is, I don't care. I do have a plan for the next time I do this though. And we're done with the basic shape of the pulley. Of course, I went ahead and eased all the sharp edges and whatnot. Let's see how the belt fits. Not too shabby. It feels like the belt has good traction and it seems to fit really well. That's good enough for me. Here's a good shot of the size difference between the new and the old pulley. It's hard to say if this is going to be enough to make the difference we want in order to generate more boost from the supercharger. Now the very last step is to modify the pulley adopter thingy to allow our newer and thicker pulley to occupy the same space as the older and thinner pulley. And I reckon while we're at it, we need to drill some holes in the new pulley so we can bolt all this stuff together. Let's start with drilling the new holes. If you recall, a few episodes ago, we made a 3D printed template to help us figure out exactly where to drill the holes on a few parts. Well, we're going to be cheating once again and use this thingy to mark the locations of the holes on the new pulley. And there we go. Let's drill these out. Off camera, I did use a center drill to establish a pilot hole, and now I'm finishing off the hole with a larger bit. So far, so good. I'll finish the other two holes off camera. And now we need to trim some material off this pulley adapter. In order to ensure a perfect belt alignment, I trimmed this adapter to the approximate size and then test fitted it on the car. After that, I was able to finish trimming the part for a perfect fit. Okay, everything's done. And now we can take a look at the finished results before we install this stuff on the car. As you can see, I had to take a lot of material off this guy, and unfortunately I didn't leave enough material to cut some sort of hub to keep these two parts perfectly centered. I think we'll be okay, and I'm not going to worry about it right now. Anyway, everything fits together with only a very, very minor amount of slop, so that's good news. Fast forward a few minutes and the new pulley is mounted on the supercharger. Now if you recall, I mentioned that this pulley is the smallest we can build because if we went any smaller, the dry belt would come dangerously close to rubbing on this chunk of steel right here. So just in case you're wondering, this pulley is actually smaller, but it's unusable because of the interference problem I just mentioned. Plus, we would have to shift the entire supercharger over to the right, which ain't going to happen, because that causes a ton of other problems. Nope, this is good enough for now, and if we had to do more modifications, we can always build a bigger pulley to replace the one that's on the crankshaft. Fast forward a bit, and the dry belt installed, and everything's been put back together. I reckon we need to see if this thing actually works. Since the engine's cold, I'll give the glow plug some juice to get this party started. After letting the engine warm up for a few minutes, I gave the throttle a nudge so we could have a look at the boost off idle. Well, shucks. That's not the boost we're looking for. But that's okay. We can use this as an opportunity to gather more data. Now, one of the things I do have some concerns about is how well will the fabricated pulley hold up? I mean, after all, it's a major component, and if it's not built correctly, it may destroy the drive belt. So, I think we need to take the car out for a long road test. Actually, since we'll be putting some miles on the car, let's do a fuel economy test and a full throttle acceleration test. That'll be fun, and it'll only add a few minutes to the video, but in real life, these road tests are very time consuming, and sometimes we discover some interesting information, especially since this is the only three cylinder, 719cc, supercharged, diesel powered, lightweight, and very aerodynamic car in existence. Off camera, I prepped the car for the fuel economy run. Today, we're going to be putting a few more miles on the car than normal. But don't worry, through the magic of video editing, we'll be done before you have time for that second cup of coffee. 
Oh boy, it looks like we got a ton of traffic today, and it's not even rush hour. Well, it looks like the traffic's starting to lighten up a little bit. Hopefully it'll stay that way for the rest of the test drive. And our first bit of interesting information. Once the car gets up to cruising speed, the exhaust gas temperatures seem to drop quickly and are lower than normal. Hmm. Now for the boost, well, it's a disappointment and at cruising speed we're seeing a little bit more than 6 PSI. Outside the right window, the dirt looks about the same both on the window and in the fields, so that's good. The intake temperature is a lot higher and right now we're about 30 degrees above what I normally see. The cows appear to be doing okay, I guess. I really don't know anything about cows. Anyway, today is about 70 degrees here in paradise and the trees are starting to bud, so spring has arrived here in Kansas. Overall, the car is running great and it actually feels like a normal car. Now, one of the things I noticed since we started the supercharger experiments is when the transmission's in fifth gear, the engine has no problem keeping the car moving forward. Now, without the supercharger, fifth gear was always kind of iffy. So we've covered over 80 miles in the few seconds that you've been watching. I think that's probably enough for today. But before we head back to the shop, let's do an acceleration run. All right, well, will a minor change in boost make this a little bit faster? Let's find out. The time to beat is 22.96 seconds to get to 55 miles per hour. Wow, that's actually a lot better than I thought it would do. So it looks like we managed to shave another 2.28 seconds off the acceleration time. Now keep in mind, yes, we did have more boost, but we also had elevated intake temperatures. Interesting. Hey, let's head back to the shop and figure out what the fuel economy was. So this car delivers some pretty crazy fuel economy numbers and the current high water mark is 73.58 miles per US gallon. Today we only did one fuel economy test. Now normally we do multiple tests and average the results. Anyway, today we scored 72.45 miles to the gallon. So I, I don't know. I think the fuel economy is about the same. And the only thing we did different was on this test we also included the full throttle acceleration run. Typically, we don't do that during a fuel economy test. Now, the real purpose of this test was to see if the custom-made pulley on the supercharger would actually work without destroying the drive belt. And I'm happy to report the drive belt survived without any issues whatsoever. So what that means is we're good to go for fabricating a new and larger pulley for the crankshaft. And that should provide us with enough overdrive on the stupid charger to generate the boost we're looking for. Now we did actually learn some stuff. For instance, the car is actually a few seconds faster, which puts a big smile on my face because faster is always better. The intake temperature is significantly higher, even though the boost only increased by one or one and a half PSI. That's interesting. At this point, I don't think we need to install an intercooler yet, but we do have one ready to install. Probably the best thing to do is to just keep monitoring the temperatures. Now my reluctance to installing an intercooler is simple. In the past, we installed an intercooler on the turbocharged version of this engine and it made no difference in power, it made no difference in fuel economy, and it made no difference in exhaust gas temperatures. So right now an intercooler would just get in the way and since I'm the only person who actually works on this car, I would rather not have another complex system taking up valuable space. At the same time, I'm trying to make changes to other things. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, I really want to get started on the new crankshaft pulley, so this is probably a good time to end the video, and we'll see you next time. Until then. Alexa, open a portal to, um...
Okay, well, I think most of the audience is bailed out by now, but there's still a few of you watching. Hey, thanks for hanging around. So the diesel Honda Inside is definitely getting a lot quicker, and we still have room for improvement. Since I have two of these cars, a completely stock gasoline electric hybrid, and of course the supercharged diesel version, have you ever wondered how close the diesel is to matching the performance of the unmodified car? Let's find out. The time to beat is 20.68 seconds. Well, it looks like the unmodified car is four and a half seconds quicker, so we have some work to do. Hmm.